So I'm making this video because I ended up buying one of those Vitachi Spark 150s online. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to go online and look for videos on, on this. And there's just absolutely nothing out there of good quality. Some of them are good. Like this one guy had a nice video like showing how he changed the oil and all that. But the other ones are just trash. Like, But anyways, so I'm making this video. And um, I'll answer questions if I can. And I'll have a link on this um page if you decide that you want to buy one so it'll be down you know, below so here she is I ordered the black one and uh, so it's um, the spark 150 if you see right here 150 right 150i or whatever a little known fact about these machines is that they're actually a rebranded Honda um, like Honda click and a Honda Vario so if you're looking for parts, you can actually um, Google those things, and it brings up lots of parts for it. Like you can buy these weird springs for it, and and some guy had a like a light kit for it. It was kind of cool. So so like I said, here she is, and uh, I really like it. You know, I'm a big dude. I weigh about 270 pounds, and this thing hauls me around pretty good. I've had it for about three weeks now. And uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. The only thing I didn't like about it was this box that came with it. It's obviously the cheapest thing in the world. And I'll tell you and show you why later in the video. But everything else, pretty happy with. It looks slick. It completely blew my expectations out of the water. The only thing I had to do to put together when I got this is... This piece right here was uh, screwed in. So you can see there's a you know Phillips head screw in there. Um, but it wasn't screwed in yet, it was off, so it was open. The steering was actually hanging right here for, for, um, for shipping and it came in a crate. So that was pretty cool. I had to deliver to my front door um, by the carrier and it was just in a crate probably about a foot shorter than what this is right here so the mirrors weren't on they were in a little case the box wasn't on it was in its own thing um, steering was down here and then that was off and then this wheel wasn't on and this wheel has you know your brakes you got your your caliper back there and then this little um, thing here is the odometer and um, on this side, you had to insert this little spacer here, and it has a bearing inside of it. I'm sure that's going to be the first thing that goes out on this bike. But um, I assembled that. It would have been a lot easier if I had help, but since I'm a guy and I don't like to ask for help, I did most of it by myself, and I really regret it because once I did get help, it was just like an hour and a half to get it put together. So This thing here, this front fender, was actually not attached either so I had to attach it and it was like four bolts it was pretty pretty easy to do almost everything on this was um self-explanatory this uh s suspension back here was not attached down there at the bottom and that's where I needed the most help was lifting this thing up to slide that bolt in there and screw it on but once it's in there it's going nowhere man of course you can see the brake back here as well but um, it did come with a license plate thingy, but not that. I actually had to go buy that because in Utah, your plate doesn't fit whatever size license plate that they have on this thing, which I think in other states they have bigger plates, so that's probably the reason why. But um, pretty simple. came like that. Um, got your kickstand right here. The one thing that I didn't figure out until like five days after I got it was pushing down on this thing here. Oh, and then lifting, sorry, does that. So it gets the back tire off the ground. It's just the scooter stand. I don't know why I didn't even think about doing that, but um, it made putting it together a lot. It would have made putting it together a lot easier, but of course, I didn't ask for help, so I did it the hard way. It's like the story of my life. So um, once it's all assembled, it looks like that. Um... Turn the key on and you're going to hear it want to connect to Bluetooth. 
and it'll want to connect to Bluetooth because this is the Bluetooth controls here. I actually have a SD card up inside there, right here, and then it's got a thumb drive, but I thought you could put a thumb drive in there and you could put music on it, but it's actually for charging your phone. So um, I have it set to music now, so I turn it on. Music. And it starts playing my, my music. I've been, don't know why, but I've been listening to a lot of ska music as I'm driving this thing. It just seems to fit it appropriately. We'll go ahead and pause that. That's one thing I don't like about this is it will always try to connect to your Bluetooth or it will immediately start playing music. You cannot shut it off. Here is the speaker. It's waterproof, or so they say. Um, and uh, it's um, pretty loud. I like it. I can hear it as I'm going down the road, and I wear a full face mask, helmet, and uh, with a visor, and I still can hear it blasting, so it's pretty cool. And uh, a nice place to hang your groceries right here. So as you can see, I got 159.6 miles on it. And uh, one thing that I've noticed on this is that my odometer doesn't match my speed. I actually drive by those little signs that tell you how fast you're going. And this is always five miles less. So if I'm doing 20, I'm actually doing 15. So I've just started running um, 25 and 20. I'm sure there's a fix for it, but I mean, I don't care. This thing's just to get me to work and back. Um, the lights on this thing, um, started going out like on the dash and all this was flashing. I ended up, uh, getting surgical with it and what I mean is I had to take all of this stuff off so I unscrewed the mirrors had to um, take the screws out of all of this plastic pull it apart without breaking it which was a chore in itself because I mean that's just it's made in China so everything's so fragile over there so you had to be really careful with it and I got big hands so uh, you know I could break things a lot easier but it actually came apart a lot simpler than I thought it would and there was a wiring harness in here that went to this and I just pushed it back together and put a rubber band around it and I haven't had an issue at all ever since so if you do have a problem with this flashing it's because of that reason. But there's another thing, and I've been told two, two things about this. It's so like when you start it, you turn the key on, and then you hold the brake. Oh, of course it's gonna do that because it's filming. So, if you come over here, you see how these lights are flashing? Some people say that it's supposed to do that. Other people say that it's not supposed to do that. That battery is fully charged, which the battery was down here. And uh, it does come with a battery and you have to put it in and it is meticulous. So make sure that you're ready to, to be extremely frustrated for about 20 minutes because that thing sucks. <laughs> so um, I, it's got a fully charged battery, but when I'm giving it fuel or when I'm giving it throttle, it shuts off immediately. So I kind of think that it is a part of the safety feature of this, but I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm not a scooter doctor. So here is the ignition. And it's kind of cool because you can flip this thing up and now it's locked and you can't, you can't undo it. It's this craziest little setup. You can't undo it, but you get your key and I'm sorry if this is going blurry. You put in this little octagon thing here, you give it a turn and look, it's open again. And then your key will go in and then you'll turn it one click. There's no power going to it, but it's engaged the seat. You push the seat button. You hear a click back here. You pull this up and there is your interior. I went and bought one of these things for the registration and all that. And it's been holding it in there pretty well. But yeah, so here's your storage compartment and then you can, the engines underneath this, two screws here and here, four bolts down here brings the seat and the compartment up. It completely detaches that way. Only those six bolts are holding your butt down. <laughs> so, and the reason why I'm telling you that is back here, there is a, you can kind of see it, it's silver. I'm gonna try to zoom in on it a little. There's some hoses in here and those hoses ended up being kinked when I got it because it came out of that way from the factory. So you're going to want to uh, make sure that you pull that up and make sure that your hoses are not kinked because 
that's why my vehicle kept dying is there was no uh, no fuel getting to the um, to the engine so um, that's the first thing I would recommend doing when you get this thing is taking that seat off but the most important thing that you do on this scooter when you get it is change the oil I immediately change the oil on this thing everybody says don't use the oil that's in the machine swap it out so I went to the motorcycle shop Come over here to my little wall of chemicals and this is what I ended up picking up this 10w40 full synthetic and uh, that's what the mo guy at the motorcycle shop told me to use and he says that all the scooters in my town are using this stuff and uh, the reason why is because I live in the desert and it's hotter than hell it's actually 105 degrees here right now even with cloud cover and uh, that oil handles the heat better so yeah make sure that you change the oil when you get it here's where the fuel goes in I've had this thing for three weeks now got 150 something miles on it I've only put fuel in it like three times like I've only gone through like a gallon and a half of fuel it's awesome dude and what I do is I use ethanol free fuel which every person that runs a motorcycle or a scooter tells you that's the only fuel that you should be using and uh and it runs like a champ um i go to the gas station and i have two of these one gallon tanks i even have on there scooter juice ethanol free only and when i get home from work i just top it off i'm not even going to top it off today i put 20 miles on it today i topped it off last night so that's all the fuel that i use with 20 miles so not a lot of fuel used it's the whole reason I bought it was because this truck right here with our current economy right now is costing me $195 to fill and driving this back and forth to work just isn't feasible so I bought this little rinky dink thing I had it delivered roughly here I had a, I bought and delivered here for about $1,700 which is not a bad price to have a scooter delivered to your house you can pay to have it assembled before it gets here but don't even I wouldn't even worry about that I mean it's gonna cost more to ship it was so easy to put together to change the oil was easy you got your dipstick right here right y'all then you come around here and you know you have all you have this that's where you can change the oil out and then you come over to the other side where the dipstick is and underneath there is a I don't know if you can see it from here I'm hoping that you can we just take that out and there's a filter in there really simple to do um, it uh, one of those jugs I still have oil left over in that jug after filling it up I put in I think about 700 um, milliliters in it maybe 750 somewhere around there wasn't hard to do um, the hardest thing is disposing of oil after you get it out that's the crappy thing is you got to go find some place that'll take it so now we're going to take the key out. I'm going to show you this cheap little container that came with it. Ooh, wrong key. We want to use this key here. So the key goes in. Unclick. It turns. You have to put this all together too, just so you know. And bam, it opens up. It's made of, I think Barbie's dream house is a firmer plastic than this thing. But yeah, it comes just like that. You have to attach this piece. You have to attach this and, and this. I actually put a longer screw in here because the shorter screw, if I had drilled it, it would have come, it would have only uh, provided just a little bit of space for this to move around. So I put the longer screw in. Um, this is where it gets crappy. So I only have two bolts holding this thing down. You're supposed to have four, but they don't line up with anything. These are the only two bolts that lined up on this entire thing. It was pretty ridiculous. I did a lot of head scratching and I, yeah, I could go in and I can drill. I have to drill a hole here and here to get it to fit, but there's no point in that. I mean, it's going to hold on there. It's not like I'm going to be hauling anybody on this thing. I'm already pushing the weight capacity on this, which the weight capacity on this is 330 pounds and uh, I'm not going to be hauling anybody on it. But I mean, it is awesome. I have no regrets buying this thing. As I stated earlier, this thing is a rebranded Honda 
um, Vario and or Click Honda Click 150i, or it'll even goes like a 160, depends on which one you're looking at. So that's where you can find parts for it, and uh, you know you can find really cool things. Like I'm gonna order myself a new mirror for this because the mirrors just are not big enough for me. I want to get something a little that a little further, maybe a little rounder. And I found where these people in Thailand and they ended up making like a modified mirror for it because this thing is like the number one seller in Thailand and um, God, whatever country you can think of over there, this thing's selling like crazy because it's good on fuel, it's dependable, it goes really fast. I've got this thing up to 55 miles an hour and uh, that's 55 even with adjusting on the on the fuel on the speedometer but um, I've got this thing up to 55 miles an hour I didn't wobble but I'm not saying that it won't wobble for you <laughs> so be careful but this thing I comfortably do 35 miles an hour on it to work every single day on the back roads and I'm not wasting a ton of fuel doing it so I I guess at the end of the day, I would buy one of these things if you're thinking about buying one. I'm six foot one. I'm about 270 pounds. I look ridiculous on it, but I'm saving money on fuel because right now this economy sucks. And this is me fighting the man and not getting an electric vehicle. <laughs> oh, hey, look, my wife's home. She's ruining the shot, man. So, but anyways, um, yeah, definitely buy one. They're really cool. Um, I'll answer any questions that you have if I can. But yeah, check it out. Buy one. Vitachi Spark 150.